say that I am very disappointed in the town of Webster for the actions that they have taken. Cynthia, well, I hate to do it. Can you make sure you're talking into the microphone? Is it that sensitive? Yes. I'm here. No, I can hear you now. I, I can hear you. Is that it? Okay. I can do that. Can you also state your address for the record? Sure. My name is Cynthia Dactour. My address is 774 Bell Harbor Trail here in the town. I want to say that I'm very disappointed in the way the town of Webster has handled the EMS situation in the town. One of my great concerns, and I don't know if any or all of you have had the occasion to require immediate ambulance service for a life-threatening situation. And I did a year ago, no doubt, such that I had asked to go to Strong Memorial because that's where my doctors are. They told me I couldn't make it to Strong Memorial, so they took me to Rochester General. The type of care and concern that they gave me was unparalleled. I had had to call them the year before because of <laughs> acute pancreatitis. Both times they were wonderful. So when I started kind of through the back door finding out that the town of Webster somehow could not come to an agreement with the ambulance. I was upset. I told all my friends. They were equally as upset. And now I see we're to this point where tomorrow Penfield is going to be responsible for us. I believe that there has been a distinct lack of transparency and communication. These are two things that Mr. Flaherty likes to point out that are so important in the town and that people don't come to town board meetings, etc., etc. There's absolutely nothing on the Town of Webster Facebook page regarding the EMS situation. Nothing. We like to talk about our brand new highway department, which by the way, God knows how much that costs. It's also mentioned by Mr. Flaherty, who for some reason is unwilling to look up what I'm speaking, that the Webster Herald is where information is posted. If you Google the Webster Herald at their website, it says it's not operational. Even if I wanted to subscribe to it, how would I? There's nothing on spectrum. What I would like to know, and I do not know if in this forum anyone here will answer my questions. I'll ask that question. Will people here answer my questions? Or assist you? You can tell me whether you would answer if I asked you a question. So the evidence I have this. Um, without knowing the question, I can't answer that. I can't answer if you're going to, because I don't know if you're going to ask me, like, what are my I'm wife sorry, I like I can barely do? hear you. I cannot answer whether I would answer your question until I heard the okay, question. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll specifically ask the question. You stated in your supervisor that there were a number of points, bones of contention, I'll call them, between you folks and the ambulance service. I'd like to know what those points of contention were, more than one word. Yeah, I can answer that question. I just want you to know you're at four minutes and four seconds. So I'm going to give you some slack here. Do you have another question? No. That's it? And you well, depending upon your answer. You're, you're going to run out of time because my answer 
doesn't count in the year. It counts in the year time. So how, how, how would you like and to And I this? will go back to what I said okay. when I came here. That I will make an appointment to talk I, to you sometime they, within the next two weeks to find out what exactly, because it was never published anywhere that I could find. So how, as a resident of this town, can I make a decision whether or not you folks were in the room or the ambulance company was? Okay. I'll tell you and we're that now the five ambulance minutes. company happily answered my questions. Okay. So I, in, I, I want to ask one question of you. Is this my time or yours? Uh, well, you don't have to answer this question. You said that the Webster Herald, you couldn't get a hold of it if you even wanted to, okay? But you said in your supervisor corner uh, column, how did you see my supervisor's corner column? Because somewhere, someone said we were losing our ambulance. Okay. Okay. That's all I need and to And I went to the town of Webster website to find very little news information. Okay. Thank you. Um, do you want to answer the question? Well, because you're the EMS with, liaison. With respect to you know notifying and also publicizing, I think you're up to 15 or 16 articles. 15. 15 articles. Oh no, I do. Okay. I saw it because each one announces which. Right. Yeah, I've read them. Well, it still doesn't answer the question. What was the I believe that one of your one of your articles most certainly did identify. Of the By the way, nobody can hear you now that you're off the podium. Well, so it doesn't. Really right. <laughs> so Cynthia, I, I, you know, I, I understand the minute you walked through the door when I said hi to you, you know, there's nothing I can say that is going to make you happy or whatever. I call it Pat Stevens, our, our uh, oh, Iowa right. superintendent, says, no. you, no, you no, hate no, my no. face. And that's fine. But yeah, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just trying to be straight with you. You if you speak from the crowd, that's not how this works. You speak from the podium, you had your five minutes, and, and now we're going to answer your question. And we're and it's a good question. Thank you, Dr. Well, that's great. All right. Did, did I understand you to say that you were going to make an appointment with a supervisor yep. to, to speak to him individually? That's great. Because yeah. also understand that maybe I, I misunderstood. I could be the speaker. No, I'm not trying to be patronizing. I'm just trying to be factual here that I think it's a great <coughs> idea for you to sit down with the supervisor and also because of the fact that if I understood you correctly that you have already met with the EMS, correct? I have talked. That's great. So now you're going to get both sides. Thank you very much for doing that. I appreciate it. Okay. So, I think the 15 articles uh, over the last two years. And the reason why I always reference how many there are is for things just like this. Um, that when somebody comes and says, you, you've not been transparent, you, you haven't told us why, I feel pretty confident that we have been unbelievably transparent. And I think, and it's funny, this, you, she's shaking her head like this you haven't been and brian bootman's back there like holy cow is there anything more we could have said brian except for going to people's doors and knocking on them no i mean they, you guys published links i'm a i'm a town resident okay like yeah. resident. Okay. so i would also point out the fact that we have had numerous discussions in these board meetings specifically regarding ems yes to in, in, in those meetings are on our website. So I just want to say this because I think Cynthia deserves. No, Cynthia's not figuring out that that the, the podium is where the, the people in the crowd talk, and and this dais is where we talk. So I'm going to answer the question, okay? Yeah. And she doesn't want one word answers, so. You get ready. Uh, you better time me on this one. I'll try to do it in five minutes or less, just like the time that you were given on the podium. In November of 2021, the town board did a resolution to what I call Trump, the West Webster Fire District awarding the ambulance, the EMS 
authorities they had to Penfield Volunteer Ambulance, who Glenn Becker is in the room tonight from them. We did that because we thought, well, as a town board, we think differently than the West Webster Fire District leadership and the Northeast Joint Fire District leadership. Their meets and bounds of their district is what they need to think about pragmatically. We're the town board. We need to think of the full 35 square miles that encompass both of those districts. So we made a conscious decision that what was best for the town was not to split it in half and have Penfield Volunteer Ambulance making the calls on the west side of Harvard Road and NEQAL's Northeast Quadrant Advanced Life Support under a contract with the town's municipal authorities, WEMS, Webster Emergency Medical Services. That would not have been a good play. We made that decision, and I gotta say, much to the chagrin of the West Webster Fire District leadership. So, I gotta tell you something, Mrs. Doctor. If you're looking for more people that are in the Tom Flaherty Hate Club, you should go down there. I hope that they maybe are not thinking that way, but they did not like me at that time, nor this board. That was the right decision. Now, when we made that decision, we stood on this podium that night in November of 21 and said, I wanna make this very clear. This is not us handing meatballs the whole town, and that's that. We are going to amend the current contract because the current contract between WEMS, our municipal authority, certificate of need, which we're the only town in Monroe County that has one, we just had a major change to that contract because NEQALS now has all of West Webster. So we have to make changes to that contract. And we, NEQALS leadership, all the way along with John Cahill, our EMS liaison, and myself, from June to November of 21, said, of course we would make changes, of course we'll make changes. And then when John Cahill and Patty, uh, John Cahill and Patty Cataldi, our deputy supervisor, and our town attorney sat down in December of 21 and said, let's start talking about this amended contract. I don't know really if Nequal's leadership was that much of an engaged participant in that. They had gotten us to award them the whole town without doing an amended contract. Now, we looked at this and said, okay, well, that, that was a risk we took, all right, on good faith, but it kind of got really trumped in about April of 2022 because we were under the assumption that if we gave Nequals all of West Webster, that we had figured out math, John, and it was about a net $250,000 to Nequals annually from us giving them that section of town. And that was re theoretically going to take care of any financial problems they had. Well, the New Year's Day of 2022 celebration ended very quickly because by April, Nequals had applied to the town for $450,000 of our ARPA money. Now, we weren't planning on giving any of our ARPA money to not-for-profits, so we had to figure out, well, this puts us in a very unusual position. We can't just glad hand and give that to a not-for-profit when there's a ton of not-for-profits in the town of Webster that might want to have some of our ARPA money, too. So we set up a situation where you can apply for our ARPA money, and I think 14 different, uh, is that right, Paul? 14 times. 14 applied for our ARPA money, and on July 7th, right? On July 7th, we awarded NEQALS, on July 7th, 2022, $205,000 of our NEQALS money. I'm sorry, of our ARPA money. Here we were, taking pictures on July 7th at the board meeting. They got $205,000. Now remember, Six months earlier, we had just awarded them the whole town, which was supposed to pick them up $250,000 annually for having the whole town. But you can't make this stuff up, Cynthia. Three weeks later, on July 28, 2022, the Nequals leadership came up to that podium and said, we need $800,000 in a tax district, an EMS tax district, and we need it by January 1st, 2023. That made this town board step back and say, wait a minute, okay? Hear me out, you asked for the answer, all right? Okay. We said, we can't just cut $800,000 checks 
without figuring out a change to the contract and understanding how your business operates currently so we're not just handing taxpayer money over to a private company that is not managing that money to the best interest of the taxpayers. And so that led John to a elongated uh, 17 month due diligence process. And here is the money answer. Somewhat overly simplified. During that 17 months, from August of 2022, until Nequal's leadership in December of 2023 decided, we're going to give you a 90 day notice town. We don't want to be your outsourced ambulance company anymore. All right? They did that on December 29, 2023. One thing that was consistent, and I kept saying it at this podium, writing in articles, they wanted the money and they didn't want any changes to the contract. They didn't want any changes to their current organizational structure and how they operate it, which they operate with a fly car with a paramedic and a transport ambulance with an EMT and they meet at the site. 17 EMS agencies in Monroe County and they're the only one that uses that as their core model. And they all, <laughs> sure it does. Um, and so they also, they also have lease staffing. They take their staff they're EMTs. They're paramedics, basically. Yeah. And they and they have a they're a private company. God bless them. They went out and got revenue from Williamson, New York. That's not Western. They went out and got revenue from Richmond, New York. That's Honeywell Falls, South of there, right? And basically they reported in their QuickBooks, Paul, that they were they were making money on these contracts, right? Yeah. Because they said, we want this money from the town of Webster because it will it really is to subsidize our paramedics pay and our EMT pay. The problem is, when you looked at the base, the details of their paramedics and their EMTs and who they had on staff and how many hours and how many were being dedicated to these contracts, I don't think there is any way you could describe this that we would have Webster taxpayers subsidizing contracts in Richmond and prior in Williams. Well, as part of the due diligence process, we showed that that was happening. Right. So, our point was very simple. We're not adverse to giving money. We're not adverse to the town board and town coffers, either general fund discretionary or setting up a tax district for EMS, which might happen in the future. Right. We're not adverse to giving money. What we're adverse to is throwing good money after bad. And throw, because that is not why you elected us. Our biggest job as a town board member, in my opinion, is the fiduciary responsibility of your tax dollars. And we wouldn't be doing our job. It's a dereliction of duty if we basically just kowtow and handed eight hundred thousand dollars because you're not going to like it, Cynthia. Because you know they save lives and do this and that. You asked a question up there. Has anybody ever had to take an ambulance because they had to have their life saved? You're looking at one of them right here. Guess what? Then we are aligned, aren't we? But you know what? Well, if we both got our life saved by ambulance, we're aligned at least on that. Now, as time went on, it became very apparent. It's one of my favorite sayings. Don't listen to what people say. Watch what they do. They kept saying to John and me and Paul and Charlie and whatever, oh, changes in the contract, this and that, but their formal in writing proposals to us was give us 45 grand a month, we're the best. 16. No changes. Uh, I thought it was 16. It was May of 2023. They did a resolution uh, and presented it to this town board, 45 grand a month, no changes. And then that was a resolution in May of 23. And then the other written thing was essentially from their attorney in November of 23 that said, <laughs> you give us $210,000 by December 8th, or we're going to file with the state that we're going out of business. Those are the only two formal things in writing we ever got from them. So they can tell you stories until the cows come home of what they said they were going to do, 
But the only formal things they gave us was money for nothing, for no changes. And that was always a non-starter with this board. There, that was a non-starter with this board. We were very clear about this. And I think the narrative became, for anybody that does social media, is that this was somehow a personal thing between me and Ahmed Mustafa, the chairman of the board. And the funny thing about that is, is that not only was it not a personal thing, and anybody who's worked with me knows that my whole, I think, compass of decision making is like, don't put emotion into it, we have to go with facts, is that as, as recently as October or November of 23, when John and Russ Siskin had a committee together that was working with Nequals on a business and operations plan to present to this town board in January with the proposed funding, which was going to be 700 or 800 grand annually, okay? When it became apparent that Russ would become one of the leaders of Nequals, I said, that, I do an Irish gym. I That's enough leadership change for me. I said, Leadership change needs to be done. Organizational structure needs to be done. I already told you why. Lease staffing and the fly car model that <laughs> all you got to do is look at the data and see how it is not the right model for a 35 square mile town with 4,500 ambulance calls a year that have pay or mix that are configured of a socioeconomic makeup of this town. It is not the model you do here, and if you research it, it is a rural area model. We are not a rural town. 45,000 people in 35 square miles, it's not the model. But Nequals stood their ground. God bless them. We're not changing. You can't tell us to get rid of our, change our leadership. You can't tell us to change our organizational and operational structure. And that's what they stood on. And we tried to be very, look, we're not adverse to giving you money, but those things have to change. They never did. I gotta be honest with you, I did not expect that December 29th that the Nequals leadership would take the posture of setting up a quick uh, uh, press conference and calling the president saying, hey, we quit, we're done. 90 day notice, which the contract has. And they executed it. And here we are 90 days later. And with that being said, whether it is to Mrs. Doctor's liking or not, how I answered that question, it was well over five minutes, wasn't it? Kyle? 13 minutes. You can, can, we can have more conversation with this when you call Kim Doyle and I'm sending you an email right now to set up a meeting one-on-one. -on -one. Now, with that being said, does anybody on the town board have any questions or comments about the resolution that one of you will have to make a motion if we want to move forward with this um, about uh, outsourcing our EMS in the Northeast Joint Fire District to Penfield Volunteer Ambulance as of 6 a.m. tomorrow morning because that is the formal end of the 90-day notice of Northeast Quadrant Advanced Life Support. Is there any? I think you did a fantastic job. The question I have for you is this. Oh, question. Because I'm pretty, I'm, every time I hear um, you answer the question, you did the same thing at um, our company committee meeting. Is, how do you remember those dates? I just think. Yeah. It's a sickness, to be honest with you, John. I mean, honestly. It's, it's impressive. It, it's, I don't know. I don't know. Just wrap them off. I, I don't know how. Yes, Brian. Can I, can I, I, want, I really wasn't going to speak, but can I, can I speak? Yeah, I will say the open of the floor is still open. We haven't, you know what, we haven't gone to this resolution, so go ahead, Brian. You get a two for tonight. Yeah. You get the, the town engineer uh, public hearing, and you also get the uh, open to the public for <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I, I It's unfortunate that we get the, because I did want to say, uh, you know, I have never come to town board meetings until this whole ambulance situation occurred. Um, you, you know, I, you guys moved a location to the high school. 
because there are so many of us, and yes, we were not popular for giving it to to, to Wems instead of Penfield with Webster Webs back in the day, but it, it is what it is, and 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 you know I think Wems showed their true colors, and uh, I did. you know I. I my last seven years at Xerox back in the day when I worked at Xerox was with the ambulance there. And that is where their their you know neat ball started from. So I understand that model and that model definitely is works for Xerox back in the day because employees are all working, so it was a volunteer ambulance at Xerox. So a fly car and an ambulance worked, but that you're, you're right, it does not work for the town. And I'm very happy that we are friendly going with Penfield. Um, and, and again, you guys have publicized this enough. We've had so many, so many meetings on this, so many presentations extra that are up on the website. There's a whole section dedicated, so I'm not sure what what she missed on this. Again, everything. Too bad that she didn't know that. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. The only other thing that I would add to this discussion is that this is not the role we originally wanted to go down. We worked very hard putting a business plan together um, to present to the um, ethos board and uh, it just didn't go in the right direction. But we we did a lot of work that committee and yourself, Tom and Paul. Um, we just didn't come to fruition. And it's not something that we were designing to do to go this way. Um, and, and you know this same committee will be working um, and doing analysis going forward for the long-term contract with Tenfield. So it's not like we're not following the same footprint. Yeah, um, anyway, I would like to thank, you know, all those that involved in this uh, process. And it was a very, very complicated issue because of the health and the safety of the Webster residents, you know, is my number one concern. So I'm going to support this resolution. unfortunate situation and it's very complicated like Jenny said it's extraordinarily complicated and there are there could, there were differences of opinions there are requirements from the state there, there's just a lot that go into these decisions the, the one question I had which which Paul helped to answer for me was the funding for the Penfield Ambulance. So inside the town budget, there's $50,000 for um, augmenting the ambulance service or EMS service in Webster. The, um, the amount that is required to stand up Penfield Volunteer Ambulance is a little bit more, 128000 I don't have the exact number. 956, 25. 25. And uh, so those were my questions: was where is that money going to come from? And there is, uh, there's, there are funds in the general fund to make up the difference. And um, as the town was going through this process, Penfield Volunteer Ambulance, in good faith, did take actions and incur costs to make sure that. While this transition was happening in the west side of Webster and preparing for supporting the east side of Webster, made investments in the business to ensure that when this day comes, the, is it the 29th or 30th, what day is it? I think it's the end of today. The end of today, so it was the 
29th. So if you get me today, tomorrow, we can guarantee that anybody, as Tom would say, 35 square miles of Webster, is going to have the critical care and emergency support that they need. So, um, and, and the other piece of this is that was important to me because this was unfolding fairly quickly is well, if there was $50,000 in the budget, how is that going to be budgeted for in the future? And, um, and, and for that, as soon as this resolution is made, it's, it's good till the end of this year, and then there will be discussions in the budgeting process for, this, for next year's budget. So we'll make sure it's comprehended and, and provides good coverage at an affordable cost for the town of Upstart. And so for, for, for those um, reasons, I think it's, it's extraordinarily important to support this because there's right now, there would be no other option um, after today. Yeah. To your point, um, or when we not the uh, notification from uh, Lee Hills, um, we immediately started meeting with Penfield. But Penfield has been, uh, has been ramping up significantly um, since we first started working with them knowing that this day was coming quickly. Uh, I believe to date they've hired about at least 11 um, details employees, paramedics and EMTs, and have been ramping them up, getting them on board, and they spent significant money on equipment. One of the ambulances that were retired or not retired, so they had to equip that. So they've expended quite a bit of money, and that's to the benefit of of the town of Webster and Glenn, thank you and your team for all your cooperation. And um, you know, especially it comes down to also people, right? There's a lot of young people that were going to be out of a job, and they have been hired not only by Penfield but by other ambulance corporations in Monroe County. Which was I was glad to hear that, and, and thank you for doing that. And I talked to um, I don't want to name who it is, but I've been speaking on a regular basis regarding the environment at Penfield because we bring a lot of people in from a different ambulance company. Sometimes the transition isn't too smooth. Um, you get a lot, you have a lot of different personalities. And I have, not, have heard nothing but positive things from this gentleman who I trust and respect about the transition from details and how welcoming that Penfield has been. So I, I want to mention that and also thank you for that. Thank you. And <clears throat> I, I will say that uh, I really thought that by January of 24, based on uh, work that John was doing on the, this committee um, with Russ Siskin and some Neat Walls board members right. and uh, uh, leadership day to day, that we were going to have them come in and present the business plan, the operations, changes, whatever, and then the proposed funding that they would need from the town. And we were getting a glimpse of that as early as probably mid-November, Paul, early December, that it was, it was going to be $700,000. Oh, yes. At least. And, and I want to say $700,000 for the year of 2024 to just make ends meet. This was before we would have had to figure out what monies to help them with to, to update their fleet and transport ambulances. Um, their fleet of transport ambulances is, is old. Um, the gurneys that come out of the back of the patient are manual. And, um, you know, uh, I'll say a guy my size, Brian, I'm going pick on you. If, if you could easily tip me over. Um, the modern ambulances have hydraulic gurneys so that the, the volunteer firefighters, EMTs, and the paramedics and EMTs that work for the ambulance company are put in that position of potentially having to hold up somebody manually. The, the, the hydraulic gurney, it just makes sense. It's 2024. 
Um, and that was something this, this board looked at and said, and I go back to the, you know, there's a fiduciary responsibility being on this board uh, of the taxpayers. Money. But there's also just the compass of doing the right thing, that when you see that our citizens are potentially being transported to a hospital in a less than desirable aged and accoutremented uh, transport ambulance, um, I just don't think that's right. That, that's where the, the balance of dollars and just doing the right thing, that tips. Um, so we knew that if we were going to continue on with equals, that we were going to have to invest. And I know, Paul, you had done some preliminary work to see if there was grant money, and could we lease ambulances in our name and lease them back? Look at it. You know, but, but an ambulance is, I don't know, about 200 grand? Um, not equipped with a lift or the power right. load or anything. Um, 350 fully loaded. 350,000 fully loaded. So we were trying to figure out, you know, well, how do we do that? Because we assumed we were going to be sitting with knee balls in January, um, and that's who we were going to go with. I, I can't stress enough. I, I was just blown away when they did the 90-day uh, the notice. But, you know, you're turning lemons into lemonades, the ambulances that Penfield uh, Volunteer Ambulance has, uh, they have a, a, a real strict uh, policy on how old or how many miles, and, and they either get rid of them and buy new ones or they refurbish them, and they all, I think, Glenn, have the hydraulic, uh, right. So not only is that good um, for the patient, but I guess uh, I, I kind of one of those guys. It's like I think there's a there's a respectable work condition for an EMT and a paramedic, and I don't think I, I can't sleep at night thinking that we're going to be behind. Our town board is behind putting human beings that do this job, this this thankless job, at sometimes uh, for what they get paid, in a rig that is potentially dangerous. They they deserve the respect of being in a a, a more updated rig. Now along those lines, and this was one that really bothered me since 2022 when the equals got the whole town, is I learned EMS, and whoa, have I gotten an education on EMS. And it is one complicated industry, uh, very complicated. Um, it, 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 it just made sense to me that when you go down to a base of operations where the ambulance is pulled into a bay, and while they're not on call, they go in and there's a family room and couches and chairs and they can maybe watch TV and there's a kitchen and the, maybe they can, there's bedrooms and whatever. Because these people are putting in long hours and so when they're not on call, if they're going to be waiting for the next call, um, it's kind of nice to be in a base like that. Um, Eagles had their base on Jackson Road. But then they said, don't worry about the people in West Webster, because West Webster are over on DeWitt. That's a long ways from Jackson Road. So if they got to go to a heart attack on DeWitt Road from Jackson, that can take 10 minutes. And seconds matter in this industry, right? So it just made sense to me logistically that you got to triangulate or whatever where your bases of operations are in within 35 square miles to put yourself in the best position to draw a radius around these bases and say that every citizen in Webster, every resident, assuming all things are equal and you're not out on a call and whatever, the ambulance is four minutes away. And that's a big difference than 10 minutes away. Now, Equal said, hey, we put our ambulances over and they just sit in the parking lot. So they're staged. Is that a great way to treat employees that you're sitting in your ambulance in a parking lot at 2 in the morning waiting for the next call? So that always bothered me, and I think it bothered you too, John. And one of the things we're, we're getting with Penfield Volunteer Ambulance, at least in this short-term contract, is that when they got their base on Jackson Road that is less than three miles south of the Deep Walls base. So it's still accessible quickly to some of the people in southeast um, West. But they've also worked out with the Northeast Joint Fire Department to stage 
base, whatever, one ambulance at the, what is it, the Phillips Road, uh, Station 3, mm -hmm. which if you take Station 3, and that's over near our rec center or whatever, draw a circle around that, you, you got some good coverage in East Webster there. But they also have an ambulance, I hope I'm pointing right, yeah, they also have an ambulance or ambulances over at the West Webster Joint Fire District base on Gravel Road. And I think everybody who knows the geography of Webster knows that if you're off of DeWitt, having an ambulance come from Gravel Road's fire department, you got a heck of a lot better chance if you got an emergency situation of that getting there quickly and saving your life on the way to the hospital than if it's coming from Jackson Road. So that made me feel pretty good. And it also gave a base where the EMTs and paramedics, when they're not on a call, have a place to go in, rest, grab a bite to eat, have coffee, maybe watch a TV show. I don't know why any of us would have any problems with that, why they're not on call. Because some of these, what are they working sometimes, 12 hour shifts? We, uh, we limit them to 18. We limit, limit, limit them to 18 hours. Yeah, most of them are 12 hour 18 shifts. 18 hour shifts. Now, these people are doing God's work. I don't mean to be corny, be corny, but we owe it to them to at least try to give them good ambulances and to give them a good place to be while they're not on the call. And this is where, to me, this, this is great because Penfield has those things. So we're getting them in this contract. We were ready to do that with Nequals, but it was good. Don't kid yourself, it was going to cost a lot more than $700,000 in 2024 because, John, we didn't have an answer right. beyond that seven hundred grand to how do we get their fleet of ambulances up to where they need to be with, you know, uh, all the things that I've said. And we didn't have any inroads to where they could put an ambulance in West Webster that was respectful, respectful to the EMTs and paramedics. We, we didn't have an answer to that. Well, Equal's basically given their 90-day notice, um, opened up the door to us getting the answer. Um, and it's right now through Penfield Volunteer Emergency Handlers. Um, so I know there's a lot of emotion about this. I know that the, 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 the nice lady who was here today is, you know, she's upset. There's a lot of people that are upset, and it's an emotional thing. We had to really balance this emotion with just hard facts, logistics, dollars, employee respect, ambulance, age, and accoutrements. Those are not emotional things. Those are facts. Well, there's no public hearing. Is this open to the floor? You don't have to. Uh, anybody else want to get up there? Uh, Brian? You want to no, I'm good now. <laughs> so we're out of the resolution. <laughs> We've really done all the. So I'll make a motion to authorize Tom Supervisor to sign a contract for West Webster Emergency Medical Services from today through December 2024 uh, to outsource EMS Penfield Ambulance um, in the amount of $128,000. $128,956.25. Councilman McGahill? Aye. Councilwoman Wynn? Aye. Councilwoman Wright? Aye. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye.